There are several methods available to condition litter in between flocks. These methods include windrow composting, decaking, and pulverizing. Today, we are visiting a local broiler farm to learn more about the process of windrow composting. The typical layout time for this operation is 14 to 21 days. When done properly, windrow composting will reduce pathogens like Salmonella, Campylobacter, and Clostridium perfringens, as well as improve bird health and performance. Windrowing can also reduce pathogens in the litter and conserve bedding material. The cost of crusting out and windrowing may be similar, but growers need to consider their farm's length of layout and litter depth. There are several reasons to choose windrow composting over other litter conditioning methods. Most other litter conditioning methods are surface treatments that do not result in heating, which is needed to reduce pathogen load in the litter. Let's take a closer look at the process of windrowing. It's best to begin the windrowing process within 48 hours of bird movement. Inspect the litter to ensure that the moisture is roughly between 25 to 35 percent. The right amount of moisture is needed to support microbial growth and allow the litter to be pasteurized. As a rule of thumb, the litter moisture is too high if crust extends 2 to 3 feet past the drinker lines. Some crust may be removed from the house prior to windrowing if the initial litter moisture level is too high. Construct windrows using all of the litter within the house using specialized equipment that is designed to build windrows. Typically, a windrower is attached to the rear of a tractor or to the front of a skid steer. If you are considering purchasing a windrower, make sure your tractor or skid steer has sufficient power to operate the unit. The number of rows and the windrow height depend on the size of the house and amount of litter present. In general, two to four windrows can fit within each house. Windrow height typically ranges from 18 to 36 inches. Make sure to continue ventilation throughout the whole windrowing process as ammonia will be released when building the windrows. In fact, we recommend using a properly fitted respirator during windrowing to reduce the amount of ammonia and dust that is inhaled. The temperature of the windrows must be monitored to ensure that the center of the windrow reaches at least 130 degrees Fahrenheit within 48 hours. This temperature ensures that the litter is pasteurized before the next flock. Use a thermometer with a probe that reaches the center of the windrow, about 12 to 24 inches deep. If the temperature at the center of the windrow does not reach 130 degrees Fahrenheit within 48 hours, turn the litter or flatten and completely reform the windrows. These actions will help the composting process begin. Low temperature may indicate low moisture or lack of carbon. These issues may result from reusing the same bedding for an extended period of time. Consider adding water or a carbon source like pine shavings or bedding material. If the windrow temperature does not reach 130 degrees Fahrenheit after reforming or turning. Turning reforms the windrows to ensure that the litter that was originally on the outer edges of the windrows is moved to the inside of the row so that it will also have a chance to reach at least 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Turning also aerates the litter to help with the composting process. Check the temperature 48 hours after turning to ensure the pile has again reached 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The last steps are to spread and level out the windrowed litter in the house. Start this process after the turned windrows have reached a temperature of 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Spreading and leveling should be completed at least seven days before adding a new flock. Minimal moisture is lost during the windrowing process. Therefore, moisture removal does not occur until the windrows are leveled and the house is ventilated. Spread the litter so that the depth is between four and six inches. Take time to properly level litter as it will make equipment management much easier. Once the conditioned litter is spread and leveled, continue to ventilate the house to reduce moisture and ammonia concentrations. Windrowing litter is an effective practice to reduce pathogens and conserve litter. Consider windrowing if your flocks have been challenged with disease pressure. Are you looking to start windrowing on your farm? 
we recommend starting this practice for the first time on new litter or in late spring to early summer. Windrowing breaks up the litter hard pan and will release a significant amount of ammonia. It is easier to vent this ammonia and dry the litter before the next flock during the summer months than the winter months. Once the practice of windrowing is established for litter conditioning, it can be done year-round.